What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you these five really cool tips for improving your site real realism in Revit. So when it comes to creating site plans in Revit they can kind of seem boring or empty so you do really have to add some elements to make them look a bit more interesting and a bit more realistic. Usually people uh, opt for a maybe sometimes a secondary software like Lumion or something like that to add site components but everything can be done within Revit and just by tweaking everything a little bit you can actually get something that looks pretty realistic all within Revit so you don't have to bother by exporting to different software. Okay, so that's what the tutorial is going to be all about, but before we get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Reddit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I make one one-hour advanced Balkan architect course. All of those courses, over 50 hours of content, can be found on my Patreon, first link in the description of this video, and there you can also find all of my advanced Revit project files. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. So here we are in Revit, and this is the project that I'm going to be using. This is that small house in Revit project that I have. I have a complete course on how to create this whole project and how to produce all of the project documentation necessary. But for now, we're just going to be using it as a sample file for this demonstration. So the first tip is going to be uh, for the street. So for the street, make sure to create a realistic street. So especially in a case like this, where we have basically a flat uh, topography around, uh, if I select this uh, here street, you're going to notice that here it says topography. So this is just a small piece of topography. So if I just hit delete, we can get rid of that and I think that's a better option. So for the street, what I like to do is I actually like to model the street. So what I'm going to do is just go here to the floor plan or maybe the site plan, even better. Uh, there we go. So for the site plan, one quick thing that I am going to be doing just to make it a bit easier to work with is go here to properties, scroll down a bit and then here for orientation, instead of true north, I'm going to get it back to project north just to make it a bit easier to work with and also maybe get rid of the crop view. Okay, there we go. So now we can start working and maybe get rid of annotation families just to make it a bit easier. So I'm just going to go here to properties, I scroll up until I find visibility graphics overrides and just temporarily completely disable all annotation. Hit apply, okay, and there we go. Looks a, a lot cleaner. Okay, so now let's create the street. So for the street, I like to create it as a floor. So I'm going to start off with the generic 400 millimeter one. Uh, go into edit type, I'll go into structure, edit the structure, and let's drop the thickness down to 5 centimeters or something like that. And then for the material, let's uh, go and search for uh, some sort of a, let's see, uh, asphalt uh, material. We should have that. Here we go. Do we have something else? Okay, here we go. I think this is the best option. Hit apply. Okay. Okay, again apply. Okay, and there we go. So now we can start placing this floor. Now because we can't really see where the garage is, maybe turn on temporarily a wireframe mode. And then here we can go straight from the garage, maybe like this, and then outside of the house. Okay, so once we have that, let's extend the street like this. Uh, let's do the other side like that. There we go. So we have our street over here. Now, of course, you can fill it this edge, perhaps. So we can go here to fill it. Uh, let's do a 100 centimeter radius. There we go. Looks perfect. And if I just hit finish and then go into 3D, this is what that looks like. And I really like the way this turned out. Of course, once we have the street created, then we have to add the kind of the, the little sidewalk uh, next to it. So I'm just going to go back here into uh, our site plan, go to the site plan, and then uh, let's uh, go here to our floor, go into, let's go straight into floor, go into edit type, duplicate this one. So let's call this one sidewalk. It would make sense to rename the original one as well. Now let's go here into structure for the thickness. Let's go with, I don't know, something like 15 and for material. Let's see, do we have just some concrete? 
Uh, let's go with this lightweight concrete, for example. Click OK. OK again. And now here we can just use the pick lines tool in order to pick these lines just like that here as well. And then I'm just going to use the offset tool with 100 centimeters and just go like that. There we go. Now go back to the line. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of the offset to drop it down to zero and then let's cap these off. Okay, I'm going to fix that later. There we go. And now just go to trim and extend and trim and extend these to corner as well as this problematic spot over here. There we go. Hit finish go into 3D and it looks like this. Now, of course, we have to offset this a little bit. So I'm just going to give it, let's go to height offset from level and just give it a 10 centimeter offset. So it looks like that. So as you can see, this looks way more realistic. You can even add a little bit of a curb there that could look nice, but I already have a tutorial on that, which I'm going to be leaving a link to in the description. So check it out if you're interested in that. Okay, so for the second tip, we're still talking about the street here and we're going to be making it a bit more realistic by adding some elements that you can actually find on the street. One of those is street lights. So this is one of those elements that I always forget to include uh, uh, for my site plans, but it does add a lot more realism uh, to your uh, site plans. So let's go here to the site and then I'm going to go here to insert a load family. And then here on desktop, I've got the, this pole light as well as this, uh, oops, pole light as well as this uh, bollard square light. And I'm just going to load that in. There we go. So those are now loaded in. Uh, and let's go here to component. Okay, so we have this is that bollard light, and then we can just place it wherever you want. Now, currently it says. None of the created elements are visible in floor plan. Uh, in the site view, you may want to check your active view parameters. So for some reason, we can't really see it. So let's see, uh, maybe we have a problem. Okay, let's turn this to hill line. Nope, uh, let's see, maybe we have some visibility graphics overrides for lights. Okay, maybe it's categorized as an electrical fixtures. Yeah, that was it. So, oops. Okay, that was odd. Okay, I didn't apply the change. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have this light over here and then maybe we can uh, place it here. Uh, elevation from level, let's just bring it down to zero and then we can maybe uh, copy it a few times here in front of the house. Like that. So immediately it is going to look a bit more realistic. There we go. So we have those. Uh, let's see, can we find that a larger light? I hope it was loaded in. There we go. Okay, and then you can add this pole light, of course, wherever you want. So we can place one perhaps here. And then again, we can copy it multiple times, maybe check multiple, and then maybe copy it each. I don't know, 1000 centimeters. Like that, and then maybe we can just copy this to the other side. Just like that, well, we don't need these. And then also we can copy them to the other side of the street. So I'm going to select these, hold the control key, select these as well, use mirror with the uh, with the draw access option and then I'm just going to mirror it around this midpoint like that and there we go. Now if we go back into 3D as you can see this is going to look way more realistic and also if you go to the site plan I really like these shadows here in the site plan from all of the all of the street lights so that that adds to realism as well. Okay, so the next step has everything to do with trees. So what they like to do as far as trees are concerned, for example, here, as you can see, these look quite uh, horrible. Uh, they don't cast any shadow and they're quite boring, but that's the least of it. If we go here in the 3D view, they look like this. And if we switch to realistic, they look even worse, especially if you're doing some top down views like this, as you can see, they tend to look 
white two dimensional and that's not really what you want to have. So I'm just going to switch this back into hidden line and then let's get rid of these trees here. These three and then also these. Okay, so let's find some really cool trees that are actually going to help this model out. So what I like to do is I like to uh, load in some 3D trees. Now these are really hard to find and within the exercise files I am going to include a few uh, options. Uh, but once you find them, they can really make your models look great. So I'm going to go here to component, uh, load family, and then here we have uh, these uh, three trees. So let's load these in, hit open, wait for a second for all three to load in, and there we go. So here, for example, this is one of the trees, maybe we can place it here. Next, let's choose the second one, so we have this smaller one. Okay, maybe the smaller one makes more sense here in the floor plan. So let's place it like that. This one we can place here behind the house. And then also, if I go here again, I think we have one more. That's this one, and let's see, yeah, that's, I guess, even bigger, so we can place it there. Now, if I go back into 3D, as you can see, this is what they look like. So, they look a lot better. Here you can see all of the, the leaves and everything. They are going to look amazing in renderings, and they also cast realistic shadows. If we go back into site plan, now we have some realistic tree shadows. So, this is really going to uh, bring you a few steps up when it comes to uh, realism with your uh, with your site plans. So make sure to find some 3D trees and include those in your projects. And even if I switch here to realistic, as you can see, they look uh, a lot better than those uh, those ones. And especially if you render them, I think they, they, they look even better. The next step for making your site plan a bit livelier is to add people. So let's go here to the site plan. I zoom in a little bit and now let's go again to component, go to load family and in this case we're just going to be using the uh, the your library that comes with the Revit and then what I'm going to do is uh, just scroll down uh, over here a little bit. Here we have entourage and we have this beetle, we have a chair but then we have female and male so we can load these, th these two in and then we can place them so you can place people like this. Also, you can change here, you, you will have many options, so we can add Lisa, and then we can add Yin, 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 then we can see what else, we can add Alex walking around here, and then here behind the house maybe we can add Jay. So there we go, now if we go back into our 3D view, let's see what these people look like. Okay, so this, okay, uh, I guess... Uh, Cynthia isn't going to make the cut, but the rest of these uh, do look really good. So if we orbit around a little bit. Here we have J. Yeah. We take a look at the other side. Okay, maybe we can orbit this one around. So we can just type in 180. There we go. So he's kind of looking at the street. There we go. Perfect. And we can rotate yin as well so let's rotate by maybe 90 degrees okay she's still turning her back to us so let's go to rotate again 90 degrees there we go looks much better so even though these are these rpc families there are they are a bit more realistic and then here we have uh, this is Lisa reading her book. So yeah, as you can see, uh, adding people to your models will make them a bit more realistic. It looks like there's actually somebody uh, living there and it's just not an empty street in an empty house. And finally, for the last tip, one thing that's missing over here, and again, it still has to do with the road, and that those are road markings. So usually for your road, you would have road markings. So what you can do for that is, let's go here into site plan, and then you can go into component, load family, and then here, let's go back uh, one folder to go back to the US metric library, scroll down and find the site, uh, just the site folder, here we have parking and then here we have a stripe or a turn arrow or a turn in straight so I'm just going to include this one as well as the pavement stripe open those two up and then here for example this one we can place here for example 
place it here but here we have to mirror it so let's just flip it to the other side just like that and then also let's find the stripe so here we go pavement stripe and then try to can position it in the center here just like that move it a bit towards the inside and then we can just copy it so copy it multiple times every 1000 centimeters so let's just extend it like this and then i'm just going to type in 1000 1000 enter 1000 enter 1000 enter and there we go so now we have some road markings and if we go into 3d this is what that looks like so we have these cool uh, yellow road markings and the whole site will look a lot more realistic and especially of course when we render it okay so those were my five tips for improving your site realism in Revit. Now I have many courses that cover uh, these and similar topics on my Patreon. First the link in the description of the video there you can also get access to all of the, my project files as well as this project with all of these site components, these trees, lamppost people and all of that. Okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video and if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.